So we read a number of authors in the Torah curriculum uh, who are not only atheists, but strong advocates for atheism, right? Powerful voices in that movement. Uh, and I guess the question I want to ask of you today is, why do we allow these, these dangerous, seditious influences uh, into, into the hearts and minds of Christian young people? What's the value or what's the virtue of these texts for a Christian education? Great question. Um, and I think that's kind of the wrong way to think about it, mm, frankly, good, yeah. um, because we follow a God who just loves to surprise us. And I think there's a sense in which, um, you know, he has given all manner of people truth. Mm. He has not just given truth to Christians. And that's like one of the funniest things about it. Um, there's this idea, common grace, this mm -hmm. theological idea that um, God has given lots of different people in history access to truth, um, even if they don't even follow him mm -hmm. as Lord of all, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so the authors that we read in Tori that aren't Christian, but are explicitly atheists, mm -hmm. we also have the belief that we can gain truth from them, hmm. um, truth that God has given them. Hmm. I think that would be the distinction and where we in a Christian uh, institution have a different perspective on that truth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It's not something they've necessarily come to on their, on their own. Um, God has given them the grace to even be able to come to those hmm. ideas. And of course, it's a different kind of grace. It's not the saving grace. That's mm -hmm. the distinction between mm -hmm. common grace and saving grace. So it's not like we have this idea that, oh, they know truth, uh, they're going to heaven, they, they know God. No, it's not like that. It's mm -hmm. a different kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I like that a lot. I, I, I think it, what it communicates to me is that there's a larger context behind one's atheism. So mm -hmm. it's not merely their content that they're communicating, but there's this other dynamic going on as we see truth mm -hmm. communicated through their words. And it makes me think about a session on Ecclesiastes that I just had. Oh, nice, yeah. Where we were asking, like, in this sea of vanity, mm. like, how do we find hope? Mm. And, you know, there's these moments in Ecclesiastes where the writer is asking us to kind of enjoy these moments that, mm. on the one hand, is like, well, this is, this is vain. Mm. But, you know, it's these, there's, it's these moments of absurdity, mm. actually, that, I find that clarify my faith. Huh. And I think about, you know, that passage of scripture that talks about the, you know, God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it communicates why faith is special. Nice. Yeah, I think, uh, so one of my favorite of our atheist authors to teach is Sartre. Uh, and, and Sartre's nausea is especially interesting to me because I, I think what these French existentialists are getting at is uh, they're processing through what it would be to live in a world where God doesn't exist, right? And whereas Nietzsche thinks about that as, oh, wouldn't that be great? Uh, these, these French existentialists, Camus and Sartre, are, are realizing how much gets lost uh, in a world without God. So for, so for Sartre, you actually, you lose the possibility of meaningful narrative in your life if you don't have a creator who's made you for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so to me, if, if I didn't have these, these clear-sighted atheists thinking about mm -hmm. the world from their mm -hmm. perspective, and actually I think mourning the death of God, mm -hmm. that's the way I like to talk mm -hmm. about it, is they're, they're reconciling themselves to what it means to live in a world without God. And that highlights to me just exactly what knowing God does for my mm -hmm. understanding of myself in the world. I think, it's, I think it's profound and fascinating. Yeah, that's a great point too. And it reminds me of, um, I think one of the ways they get truth mm. is they, they have a sense of what's wrong with the world mm -hmm. often. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I'm thinking of Marx or Freud or, mm. you know, they have an assessment of here's something that's deeply wrong with the world. Mm. Like that's how we would mm -hmm. assert kind of what they're helping us to see. Mm -hmm. um, and we just would kind of provide a different sort of solution to the problem that they're seeing, a solution mm. that they're not willing to, to acknowledge. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a way in which they can give themselves to clarifying that problem in ways we might yeah. resist. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah. we go too easily to the yep. spiritual solution, mm -hmm. but our human condition is not that simple, is yeah. it? Yeah, or we're af I think another thing is we're afraid sometimes to admit how hard life is mm -hmm. or how bad it is, which mm -hmm. is kind of ironic because we do believe in this doctrine of original sin and human <laughs> depravity and all of the rest of it. Mm. Um, but I think sometimes we in the Christian world can be too quick to just mm. sort of put a happy face on it. Mm. Um, yeah. And so sometimes these other authors 
can help us as Christians to acknowledge that. And, and thinking about that concept of fear, I think sometimes the fear is something like, if I put an 18-year-old Christian in the room with a brilliant atheist, mm. Uh, what's going to happen is they're just going to convince my 18-year-old Christian not to believe in Christianity, right? right? So there's this real fear of w w if I expose someone to an idea like this, maybe it's something that they'll never be able to recover from. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about that? What, do you, what would mm -hmm. you say to maybe a, a parent of a Tory student who's afraid of mm -hmm. that exposure and what that exposure might do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, in some ways, I, I, don't, I, I, would, I would not put them in different spaces. I would say sometimes the sophisticated communication camouflages the 18-year-old in me that's still processing these mm -hmm. questions. Nice, and that's what yeah. everyone's mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people just have more sophisticated ways of doing that. So I think in some ways it is accessible and they are in a place where as a human being they can process these questions. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and to do it with other people mm -hmm. that are um, you know, having those same questions but aren't sure if it's okay to ask, yeah. right? I think that's where nice. in a place like Tori, we encourage asking. Like, mm -hmm. we don't want people to be afraid to ask. We want to really dig into those problems because we really think God can handle it. Yes. And we're really confident that through the power of the Holy Spirit, He will give us the words and the ability to understand and to mm -hmm. see Him mm -hmm. and then come to a stronger faith. Um, so that's, I think, like really the excitement of it. Absolutely. I mean, in a sense, reading those atheists is like one of the most exciting times yes. in the Tory curriculum because you get to get in touch with those things you're kind of worried about, but can I really say it? Mm. Um, yeah. And then hopefully move to a different kind of place. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, guys. The Tory Honors Institute at Biola University. Biblically centered. Great books. Liberal education. More at biola.edu slash Tory.